I used to be a KDE user. I mean, it was fine. But I've always been intrigued by tiling window managers. They looked really cool, but I've always resisted the urge uh, to take the plunge and try any one of them because I know it takes a considerable amount of effort to set them up as usually they are very bare bones. You probably have to set a lot of things that uh, all of these uh, fancy uh, desktop environments like KDE and GNOME already do, it, do for you by default. So it takes some, some effort maybe to understand uh, maybe how to set up like the power manager, how to um, do lots of other things like for example your monitor, if you have an external monitor you want to connect it and all of these things. So um, one day I thought, I told myself uh, over the weekend, why not just try uh, one of these uh, tiling window managers? And if you don't like them, if you don't like, if you don't like it, just um, go back to KDE. No harm's done. So this is how I uh, came across i3, as it has a reputation for being uh, one of the easiest uh, tiling window ma windows managers to get into. And um, I started uh, using it uh, over the weekend, and uh, I really liked uh, liked it, and it's very easy to configure, it didn't take as much time as I wanted. And one of the uh, biggest selling points of Tiling Windows, uh, Tiling Windows managers, that uh, the, the biggest selling point that most people know about is the ability to tile. However, when I started using Tiling Windows managers, I realized that uh, the tiling pad probably is not uh, the most uh, or the biggest selling point in my opinion, because you already have uh, desktop environments like KDE and GNOME, I mean, or Pop OS, they have uh, this tiling facility enabled. For me personally, the, um, the biggest selling point for Tiling Windows managers is the ability to all the uh, workspace uh, centric type of workflow. Which means that, for example, as you can see here, I have a single, uh, I have a single window showing showing here. Usually, if you uh, if you have uh, multiple windows and desktop environments, all of these windows uh, sit on top of each other. And after a while, you have lots of windows open. It's a mess. But with Tiny Windows Managers, it's super easy to uh, move uh, windows between workspaces and all of these things. So for me personally, when I started using um, i3 and I uh, realized that I could now place all of my windows in uh, separate workspaces. I mean, this is a very simple concept, but uh, you'd be surprised at how efficient um, uh, things become. And uh, you no longer, when you no longer have to look for files, when you no longer have to look for windows, because you always know where to find a window. And I will show you how uh, this, I'm doing all of these things and then show you my current uh, workflow with i3 and how I have enhanced it in some way by using um, uh, this thing called i3 IPC, which is um, an uh, interface to the i3, uh, i3 IPC or whatever it's called. Anyway, I'll get into that in a few minutes. So when you start using i3, it uh, it's actually has a very nice documentation. You can probably read this in, I don't know, one day, and then you get an idea of what everything, is, what everything means. It's not very complicated. For example, it tells you that everything is organized in a tree, and then each tree has, uh, for example, a, a container, and then the container has a split, a v-split or horizontal split. I mean, it's very, very straightforward and easy to understand. So um, let me first of all show you my i3 config. So this is basically my i3 config, how I have things set up. And when I started, actually, this is uh, all I had, just your very basic i3 config. I have things set up here, like uh, some variables. But as you know, if you've already been using i3, is that um, the i3 config is supposed to be a place where you configure how i3 works, not to uh, write some functions, all of these things. This is uh, probably uh, one of the things that uh, you would he always hear some, uh, some how do you say, uh, cynics of i3 probably say, yeah, it's not a, it doesn't have a proper programming language or whatever, so you can't do all of this fancy stuff. Uh, you can't uh, configure i3 as you want. But actually, I don't really believe that because there is i3 IPC, I mean, which basically says that if you don't want to get into all of these nitty gritty details of how i3 works, then, um, then there's no need for that. I mean, then there's no need for that. You can use this very simple, how you launch stuff. So as you can see here, I have a um, type of things. So it's not very complicated and uh, yeah. So basically how my workspaces are set up. And um, at the moment I'm using Polybar instead of the uh, default uh, one that comes because uh, it's, I mean, it has some very fancy things, widgets that probably you can add, which uh, makes your makes life a little bit easier. And besides, I think uh, this uh, uh, polybar can be used in other Windows uh, 
TWMs, uh, I'm going to start using that word, uh, TWMs, uh, because um, let's say, for example, you decide to try another tiling window manager, I mean, another tiling window manager, and then uh, you probably would have to set, uh, set up the specific uh, uh, bar, but then since you're using polybar, which can be used in more than one TWM, so you just use the same one, no need to reconfigure it. And um, another thing probably which is also nice about iTree is that uh, there's another one called uh, TWM called Sway, which is basically almost a copy-paste in terms of the configuration uh, between uh, iTree and uh, Sway. But Sway works for Wayland, but at the moment I'm not yet convinced to move to Wayland because of um, this is I'm using my laptop, which has a NVIDIA GPU, and it doesn't really work uh, quite nicely yet with uh, Wayland, so I'm avoiding that uh, for now. So anyway, this is um, just scrolling. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit long actually. You can see that it's almost 605 lines. Yeah, but it's uh, very straightforward. I mean, probably have lots of things. So this is my um, config. I have lots of things to set up and whatever. So this is uh, how i3 looks like. It's quite nice. When I started using it, I was quite happy with it, as you would expect. And then I started noticing that okay. Um, there are some features that I, I would like, but are not possible. For example, so I usually connect uh, my computer to an external monitor. And when I connect my computer to an external monitor, I notice that, uh, let's, let me just give an example while I'm talking. So let's say I, I create a new workspace here. I have two, and I go to an, another workspace. I have three. So if I switch now, i3 has uh, this thing called, for example, let me show you. Uh, i3 I ha has a command called workspace back and forth. Now, when you have workspace back and, back and forth, for example, I currently have ma I have it mapped to like Windows tab button. So if I press Windows tab, as you can see, I'm moving between workspaces. Fine. But now let's say you have another se se secondary monitor connected. Now, because you, when you have a secondary monitor connected and you move, let's say I take, I'm, I'm now in the second monitor and I create another two workspaces and I start flipping between the work workspaces and then I take my mouse, I move it back to this workspace which I'm currently at. Now you would expect that if I press Windows tab, it should go back to the um, workspace that I was working on, right? But that doesn't, uh, that's not the way the default, that's not the default behavior of, uh, of uh, how do you call it, uh, of i3. For some reason, i3 only remembers two workspaces, whether you have uh, one monitor, 100 monitors or whatever. So if you are actually using i3 on a single monitor, you will never notice this problem. So because it just remembers the last two workspaces, fine. But as soon as you have more than one monitor and then you move your mouse to another monitor, suddenly you no longer have, uh, you can no longer switch uh, between the workspaces on a particular monitor. I was really, uh, I really hated this, this sort of behavior and I tried to look for, you know, how can I solve this? I then went to the website, I, I mean, I came across this guy, read this guy again, but for some reason, it seems to me that's the, actually the, the default behavior. So then I said, okay, maybe I need to change it. For some reason, it seems that uh, not, <laughs> not so many people actually are bothered by this fact that uh, i3 only remembers two uh, workspaces. So this is how I went to the i3 forum, like for example, I think uh, i3 GitHub. So then... Somehow I ended up um, with uh, fi 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 finding out there's, there's something called i3 IPC. So basically what's i3 IPC? So i3 IPC is an interface uh, to the i3, which uh, has, uh, which, uh, so there are different versions of i3 IPC configuration languages or whatever they are called, uh, libraries. So for example, since I'm familiar with Python, so I'm using the one that uh, is for Python. Now, uh, so basically you will have to install uh, the i3 IPC Python package, which is uh, very easy, pip install, whatever. And then basically this is what you all, I mean, seriously, this is all you need to know to start um, creating uh, fancy stuff. So basically you, let me make, maybe make this a little bit larger so that it's easier to see. So let's say this is the i3 IPC, so you just create, you just uh, import these things and then you create a connection. This says, okay, I now have a connection to the i3. And then you start, uh, as I said just now, everything is a tree in i3. So you, um, let's say I'm currently, my mouse is currently uh, on this window. So focused will basically be this window. And then from this, you can do all sorts of things like get the number of outputs and do all of these things. Anyway, I'll get into these a little bit later, but the goal of this video is not to explain how i3, uh, how i3 uh, IPC works because that would probably take a little bit too much time. 
My goal here is to show what I've done with it. And probably if you're watching this video, you will say, okay, this, that looks nice. Maybe I can uh, implement something similar. So the first thing I did, as I said, was to um, implement this feature, which is called workspace, uh, to remember my workspaces between, um, between monitors. So if I have five monitors, I want to do that. So let me just show you quickly how it looks like. So first, let's see. So this is my, let me just make this larger so that everybody's happy, even on a mobile device. Uh, let's start with this. So uh, this is how it's implemented actually. So basically I have a nice class. I mean, this is basically, uh, I would have I would have used something called a name tuple in Python to just remember, because to just remember the names of the workspaces. But I decided to just use a class because who cares? I mean, this code is not supposed to be like the most efficient thing in the world. So basically I have a class which remembers um, the previous workspace and the current workspace. And then if I need to update it, I have basically the same thing. So let me just show you quickly like um, how, I am, how, how I'm implementing it. So, so this is the entire part, which is, so you can see from here to here, that's it. Just with this probably how many lines of code, if you remove the comment, you're done. So I have, uh, I, so I, at the moment I have all of the things I'm implementing them using asynchronous, uh, async IO, because uh, I mean, since you're working with IO, so it makes sense to use async IO. So, but let's ignore that for now. So basically I have a function called previous workspace. You can give it whatever name you like. Uh, now this function will always respond to a change in workspace. So whenever you take, you move your, let's say I switch workspaces such as this, this function should be triggered. So you create a function and this function should, uh, let's say, take in a variable called event. And then you register this function, you tell i3 that, for example, as you can see here, say this function that I've just created, which is called self to previous to workspace, right? Make it uh, call this function or whenever there is a change or of workspace focus, or whenever you focus on, on a, you do your workspace. Basically, that's, that's what it does. So we have this function. And then I'm doing very simple things like if, I'm currently on the same focus monitor and then it's not a, a how do you call it, a, a floating window, then definitely I need to remember it, whatever. And then if I'm moving to another monitor, you know, I mean, this is something that you can read, but basically it's not very complicated, very straightforward process. So with this simple functionality, suddenly I have the ability to uh, move between um, workspaces on different monitors nicely. Actually, since I'm currently on my laptop, I don't have any external monitor connected. It's going to be a little bit hard for me to uh, demonstrate this, so maybe we'll uh, do that some other time. So, I mean, this is not, I, I cannot really demonstrate this right now because I'm currently on a single monitor. Now, the second feature which I, um, I want to show is the uh, ability to uh, um, scratch pads. Now, I really love scratch pads. Why? Because uh, you have things hidden from you and when you need them, you bring them back on. It's like minimized, but uh, you don't see them, which is quite nice. So let me show you previously, um, I had this, uh, this is the, 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 the way I used to actually create my scratch pads. So I would say like, okay, let's say I, sometimes I want to use a floating, um, a floating file manager. Why? Because there are some websites which tell you drag, let's say I go to some website, it says drag here, you know? So you, I mean, it's not, uh, when it comes to tiny windows managers, yeah, dragging is not uh, the most efficient uh, mechanism. So sometimes I would like to have a, a, a floating, a floating window manager, and then so I can drag. So I have Tuna, which is the one you get with XFCE. So I currently have it like this, as you can see here. But the problem is, when you have a floating, when you define a floating, win, a floating, um, a floating, uh, when you define a, a something, a, a floating window using this scratchpad mechanism, as soon as you close that window it's lost completely. So which means that, let's say I currently have, okay, let me just show you quickly. So let's say I have, this, so this is my floating floating manager, right? So let's say I decide to close this. Now, now, okay, first of all, I have this binding. Let me let me just show you. If I do, if I can hide, unhide it, hide, unhide it, right? Hide, unhide it. Now, with the default behavior in i3, as soon as this guy is closed, right? As soon as it's closed, then it can no longer be opened anymore because it's done, it's, it's gone. Because you call it only once here, right? 
The only way you can uh, recover it is by restarting the entire i3, which means that it, it forces this file to be loaded and then it runs this application again. To be honest, I think that's, that's a very weird behavior, like it's not very functional because sometimes by mistake you close it and then you realize, oops, I just closed it and then the only way to do it is to restart the entire i3 manager. So as you can see, I closed it. Now if I press my binding, it opens again. Notice the first time it opens, you can definitely feel that uh, it's actually starting a new process for this tuner, but now let me do this, you can see, do it. It's not very fast, right? It's very easy. Now I have another one like this. For example, I usually have a scratch pad with Kate. Easy. This. You can see it's super easy, float, and all of that. Now, how is this implemented in the code? Now, this one is slightly, a bit, maybe slightly more, complica more complicated. Let me just show you. Where is this located? Scratch pads, scratch pads. Where do I have scratch pads? Just a moment. Um, hmm. Okay. Probably I have forgotten. Just one second. Should probably name this in a place where it's easier to remember the name. Just a second. It should be somewhere here, believe me. Okay, this toggle application. So toggle application, I mean, this is slightly fancy maybe. So basically what I do is I um, try to, I get the tree as I've told you, get the i3 tree and then find if this application that I'm looking for is present. If it's present, then um, then uh, yes, if it's present, then I open a new window. Then I wait until that window has been opened. So this is um, probably a little bit complicated if you're not familiar with um, um, async IO. Basically, it says that um, don't execute the rest of these things until this you have gotten a reply that um, that it, it it has been successful. And when it it's done, then it does all of these things. I mean, you can read this at your leisure if you are watching this video. It's quite uh, I mean, it's not really complicated. If you're familiar with async IO, that's all. So as I said, this is the way it's done. Clearly, it's super easy, right? Now, so this is two things. I've just talked about two things. Now, another thing that I uh, I uh, wanted to do is um, the when I'm connecting an external monitor, you know. So when you connect an external monitor, if you're using things like KDE or GNOME, they already take care of the the the, the thing to to make it automatic. That is, when you connect an external monitor, uh, it you, you just need, probably don't even need to do anything. You just, it just gets connected. But that's not the case when you have a tiny window manager. When you get a tiny window manager, you, you, you have to do something like, like something like this. Um, and let's see, you have to do something like uh, X Randa, for example, yeah. So you have to do something like this and then you wait. And the, I mean, this is, it takes a little, a little bit, it's um, irritated that every time you have to connect a new monitor, you have to run this command. Yeah, or you can just map this to a, to a something. But anyway, but I don't really, uh, not not a huge fan of that. So what I did was uh, I created a function because why not a function that automatically does that for me? As I said, I called the function set display mode for whatever reason. And aha, uh -huh. yes. Now 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 I now I remember why this function actually makes sense and not just to simply run, for example, X render. Because whenever you run X render, it turns out that Polybar, this thing that I'm using. Uh, will get duplicated in like you will find you it, it, it will get duplicated in the other monitor so which means that even though you probably have two instances of polybar the one will get duplicated in the other one which is wrong so the best way to do this like when you run x render you have to kill the current polybars and reload them before it actually displays the correct way so i think this is why this is probably the biggest motivation for me to rewrite this function so as you can see here, I'm basically doing the same fancy stuff that I'm doing. Now I have a function called set display mode. So what the hell is set display, display mode? It should listen to output events, right? Again, if you go back to my code here, let's see. Where am I calling them? Oh my God, what am I doing here? Let's come here. Hmm. Let's see. Where, where was this call? As, as you can see here, this is the control monitor. It's listening to an output event. So whenever I connect a new monitor, I get an output event. And then if I have an output event, I should uh, listen to that. I don't know what's, what's going on today. Every time I do this, anyway. So yeah, so this is uh, basically what it's done. Set display mode. And then I basically call X, I get, I mean, get the names of the connected monitors. Uh -huh. Another thing that I, probably was irritating is at home I have a monitor. At work I have another monitor. It turns out that the two monitors have different names. <laughs> so if you have monitors with different names, then you can't just like uh, do something like this and then you do this and then you run, you click enter because every time this name has changed. The name that I'm using at the moment here 
which, for example, at home, I'm connecting it to an HDMI cable. At work, I'm connecting it to, for example, the mini display port or whatever. The name changes. So because the name changes, every time I go to work, I have to make sure that, oops, I forgot. This is not the one. This is the one for, for the one I'm using at home and not the one, uh, for, uh, not the one uh, at work. So basically, I, I want to avoid all of these things. I don't need to remember what monitor, the name of the monitor. Who wants to remember these things? So basically, I say get, uh, I have a function here called get connected monitors. Now, get connected monitors, it comes here and then does all of this same thing that you do on the terminal. It calls X render, and then it gets for me all of the names and it does the filtering. I mean, this is just really just simple stuff. I mean, just text processing. Now, when I get the monitors, then if I have only one monitor connected because this guy returns a list with only one item, I run this. Now, if I have multiple monitors, then probably put all of them to the right. So if I have like 10 monitors, I put all of them to the right. Basically, that's it. And then, um, yeah, then I set my wallpaper and then I launch Polybar. Now, when I launch Polybar, it does for me all of these things, same standard stuff. I kill all Polybar and then rerun Polybar and stuff like that. So probably you might be wondering like, what the hell is this debounce? So, it turns out that when you take your HDMI cable and you insert it for the first time into the port, um, you see this, uh, the uh, output, for example, on, on my computer, it, um, it seems that uh, momentarily the output uh, connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect like four or five times. So if, just, if this was not there, then uh, this function probably gets wrong a couple of times. And what happens is because it gets run a couple of times, uh, this guy gets run a uh, launch bar, uh, launch poly bar runs, gets run a couple of times, and then I probably have like a couple of them, like five or six here. So the best way to, so we want this function to run only once, at least let's say within the time period of one second, right? So I create a, a how it's called, a, um, I created a, a decorator. So the decorator just means take this function, make sure that this function runs once, in, in within one second. So if this, uh, let me just show you quickly how it looks like. So this is basically a simple decorator. So I have a decorator, blah, blah, blah. I remember the last time the function was called and then I check uh, the time that I got the current time now. And then I, I mean, it's just simple stuff. And then if, if it's within the one time, if uh, we, uh, if, one second has not yet passed, then we uh, just return. Otherwise, I call the function. Basically, that's simple. So now with this, uh, with this uh, functionality, I now can connect my external monitors quite easily and it's fine. So again, this is one of the things that I probably cannot um, show you now because I have uh, just one monitor here. So now let's uh, talk about uh, another thing that I probably didn't really didn't like too much. So for example, when you have something like i3, um, as you know, i3 is a complete manual tiler, right? So basically, uh, when you create a new, let's say this guy, I get something like this, another one, it opens like this. And then if I click, uh, if I open another one, it will open this direction, right? But for me personally, I don't, uh, I mean, I find that since I'm using my laptop and I have a 16 by nine display, this is a little bit irritating for me, to be honest. Like, I don't like seeing uh, three vertical columns. Makes no sense to me. In fact, I think that uh, any workspace shouldn't have uh, more than uh, two or three windows. I mean, if you have anything more than two, two or three windows, then you, it's getting too crowded. So what I did was, I said, okay, i3 doesn't have a, tile, I mean, a dynamic tiler. So then you write my own. So let me show you my own tiling window manager. The one, not tiling window manager. The, uh, my, dy my dynamic tiler that I currently have. So I open the first window, it looks like this. Let me just put a window one, open another window, two, and open another window, three, four. Now this looks like any other stack and whatever, right? So actually at the moment you can find uh, some scripts with, um, with a dynamic tiling for i3, but I find all of them always um, uh, are not really uh, that, they don't really work that well when you start moving windows, right? So for example, let me just show you quickly. So let's say I have this situation. Uh, when you start moving windows, then suddenly, let's say you have this situation, right? So I currently have this situation. Okay. Uh, let me just show you something quickly. Like, let's say you have something like this, right? So when you have, um, hmm. so usually, let's say I have a situation like this, right? Now, when I have a situation like this, if I close this guy, right? we it, then this guy 
would uh, occupy this entire row and this other guy would occupy this entire row, right? But this makes no sense. It makes sense that you move this guy to this place. So notice that if I, let me put number two here so you can see, if I close it, you see what, what happens? It moved automatically. Again, do something like this. I mean, this is, I call this uh, dynamic tiling a hybrid uh, between uh, dynamic and manual because I can do stuff. Let's say I come back here, notice, I do something like this. So you can see, I have, um, I have full control. The, the only difference is that the first three windows are open in this way. Now I take this guy, I can move it just like that. I create another one, as many as I would like. You see, I mean, this is, this is dynamic, uh, but at the same time, it's also, it's, it's, it's also manual. So I can move these guys like this. Let's say I have this guy, move them like this. Let's say I take this guy, move it like this, move them like this. You, 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 you get the idea, right? So I come here and then start closing, start closing, start closing, start closing. Now what's, what's, what's going to happen if, when I close this? What do you think is going to happen when I close this? When I close this, I should have all these three guys should uh, take the rows, right? But th that actually makes no sense. So it should go back to the original layout, right? So if I do something like this, let, 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 let me just label them so that you can see that what's happening. So if I close this, notice, one, two, three. To be honest, I am very happy with uh, this situation that I have at the moment. It, uh, it at least uh, doesn't uh, require me to, because every time I open two windows, the third window will open as a new column. So I find this a little bit irritating. This one seems to be working, to be honest, uh, very, very well. It's just not uh, probably 50 lines of code to do it. So let me just show you, like you can see, you can do all this fancy stuff. Move it like that and then move it like that and close this. See, it's it's really working quite nicely, to be honest. Like it 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 um, it does exactly what I want it to do. So let me just show you how this looks like. Uh, what uh, what what's called? Um, let's see. I should probably I should actually be searching, but uh, just okay. Type, so uh, then manual dynamic tiling. So basically, as you might imagine, I have three functions: one when I create a new window, one when I close the window, and one when I move the window. So when I create the window. If there's only one window, then it should split horizontally. That is vertically or something like that. If I have two windows, then all of these windows must have a vertical split, right? Vertical split means like this. Okay. Now, when I close a window, okay. When I close a window, it should, uh, so this part here is um, how to measure the uh, dimension of the window in the screen. Because if you know the dimension of the window in the screen, you know how many columns you have. And if you know how many columns you have, then you know what to do. So this is like, okay, this, you remember this part, which I wanted to show you this part, uh, this part, uh, this part, for example, this one, right? This one, yeah, this one that actually moves this window to this place. This, this, this is the place where it's, uh, where it's uh, implemented. So as long as I have uh, more than one window and then the windows are stacked uh, in a horizontal fashion, then you move the, the the top one to the left. That's it. And then you split. Uh, you split. You you create a split. Uh, like for example, you can see here that when I do this, it's split in vertically. So this is uh, this part. And then when I'm moving the windows, um, yeah, it just uh, checks for me some checks and all of this thing. Very simple. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I have almost dynamic tiling. A useful dynamic tiling. Now you might hear about some other programming language, I mean programming languages, some other tiling windows managers say we have 10 different types of tiling modes, but really, uh, I mean, all of, all of them are almost useless. They look fancy, maybe the first time you do them, but in my opinion, uh, okay, this is modern enough for me, then I can do something, let's say this, then I can do it like that, and then I'm happy. I mean, just a few clicks, seriously. Notice that what I'm doing here is, uh, let's say I want to do something like this, right? So notice, in the past, let's say you, sometimes some people would like to have uh, like, two here, one big one, and then two here, right? But uh, in the past, uh, you would also, you would always have to click on to split the windows themselves. Like you would have to tell the, uh, the i3 that split this guy uh, horizontally, split this guy vertically or whatever. Now, to be honest, I don't really remember sometimes like if it's vertical or horizontal, because for me, the name's a little bit like a, a, a confusing. Split H, which is horizontal, actually, in my, in my mind, a split H horizontal means, um, to be honest, I'm, 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 I'm even confused right now. Horizontal, does it mean split like this? I know that it means to split like this, actually. But in my head, it takes me one second actually to, to remember whether I want to split horizontally or split vertically. So right now, I don't even need to think about that. So when I come here, let's say I want to create two more here. So basically I do something like this, one, two, 
right? Then I just move this guy, uh, where is it? Okay, that's not supposed to be how it's done. Okay, because I am here, so I move this guy to this direction, then I can take this guy again. Yeah, so it takes me a little bit um, one extra step, but at the end of the day, I don't have to remember whether I have to split vertically or horizontally. This is the point I'm trying to make, but still, Probably it's not the most uh, perfect, maybe um, dynamic uh, tiling system available, but it gets the job done. So what else do I want to actually talk about? Okay, finally, the good part, the part which is really, really nice for me. The, the, the thing about launching workspaces. So, uh, so when I started using i3, I uh, found out that, okay, if I can have workspaces, which are always, which always have certain applications, then I no longer have to look for the application. So for example, let's say I want to open, um, let, me, let me think of something that I can, I can open which doesn't reveal too much. Uh, let's see, um, okay. okay, let's say I want to open uh, a PDF, right? So notice if I do search for some, something like a PDF, let's say look for some book. Okay, this book, right? So. Actually, I'll show you, this is another thing that I wasn't planning to talk about, but since I just opened it, then I'll maybe explain what, what, is, what it's doing. So I go to, let's whatever, Fundamentals of Microsoft. Notice that when I clicked on that, it uh, opened for me a new tab here called P, which I can go to P, and then it opened for me this, um, uh, this tab, which is quite nice. So now let's say I'm here, right? Then whenever I want to read my PDFs, just come here. I just press Windows P, so my windows are always uh, located in the places where they should be. Op where they should be. So I come here, I do something like this, and then uh, do something like that. Then let's say I want to do another an another PDF. Oh man, let's look for another PDF. Uh, okay, again, Razavi. <laughs> Since I don't want to probably open something that it's not supposed to be open, then, then I go something like this. Notice I, I I come to this place, then I do something like that. Right? You can see. Okay, you, you, another really nice thing I like about i3 is that you can have tabs. Now these tabs uh, for applications that do not support tabs like uh, this, this uh, one here, Ocular, you just easily move between them. So now uh, you know that, I mean, it doesn't make sense to have a, uh, to split uh, your workspace for PDFs because I mean, the thing is already PDFs are not the sort of uh, text format that uh, can be easily resized. So it makes sense to have this format. I mean, just imagine how it's so easy not to switch between them. Now, so, Whenever I come here, I do P, I go there. Now, let's say another thing that I sometimes uh, want to do, for example, let's say I want to use Inkscape to make some of my figures. So I don't I don't even need to remember like whether I had opened Inkspace or whether Inkspace is not open. No, no, I don't even remember. I know that Inkspace is always located in workspace number I. In fact, because I know where all of my windows are placed, to be honest, uh, this, this, this is kind of um, useless because uh, I don't even need to look at it to see if I have Win Inkscape open. So when I, so let's say I press Windows I, boom, I it goes to this workspace, checks if there's uh, Inkscape there. If there's no Inkscape there, then it um, opens for me a new instance of Inkscape. So let's say I'm currently here. Notice that the, 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 the workspace actually exists at the moment. So if I press Windows I, boom. It doesn't need to open Inkscape again because Inkscape again because Inkscape is already open, right? Same thing with other applications. Let's say uh, I have, uh, for example, uh, let's say what I'm currently um, uh, like uh, this tool that I'm currently using, which is called um, OBS. So OBS, I just press Windows O, then I go to OBS. So it's, you can see switch with switching between them, and all of this is so easy. So let me show you how I'm actually doing this. So let's come here to the code. Let's see where it is located. Hmm. All right, let's see here. So let's see. Um, nope. Useful functions. Okay, this plot. Key binding. So basically, in my i3, I come here, for example. Okay, no, it's not here. So let's come here. For example, in my key binding, whenever. Okay, I think it's here. Yeah, I have to solve for that. Let's see. Um, I have to look for this part. Okay. Okay, this part. You see? So let's say uh, this is the thing that I just showed you just now. Like when I press P, it uh, takes me to. Okay, notice that uh, it takes me to. For example, this is my new Vim instance. Let's say I close it, right? Then I move to Windows 4. Then I press Windows N, which is for NeoVim. Takes me back to NeoVim. 
opens it for me, remembers the previous state, it's not closed, I mean, it's really fancy. So this is the key, for example, as you can see, super n. So i3 allows you to, conf to create, let's say, new types of key bindings by using something called not, and then you create, you give it the name of whatever function you want to call. So when I press super o, it calls for me this function, it goes into my, um, into this fellow here. So you see, I, I am detecting the command. If, if it's, if the command has a nop, which means that it's actually a user-defined command, like I created this, then I check. If it's supposed to, um, let's see, what's it called? Named workspace, because you know, these are named, I call them N letters, then I call a function called launch application, right? Now, launch application, it sends me the symbol of that I sent. So the symbol that I sent is uh, N, for example, for new Vim, right? Then I go to my launch application. Where is launch application? Let's see. Yeah, launch application. Why just don't search launch application? Okay, very good. Launch application. So launch application, I check if the key that I pressed is one of the defined keys. Now I have a dictionary called app.keys. If the class is available and the command to run if the application is not present then first of all i go to my workspace open the workspace then i whatever this means i've forgotten <laughs> then if not then check for me if this workspace already contains that application if it doesn't contain if if, if not then run the command to open it that's it all of, I mean, that's so simple. Like, uh, let's see, for example, uh, I wonder what's KLM. So this M is for my mail. I'm not going to show that right now. P is for PDF, like T is for, hmm, I've forgotten what T means. T, okay, T is for, it's for translate, uh, because I am actually learning some French or whatever. So I currently have um, this place where I translate, so whatever, so I press T, I come here direct. So it's super easy, as you can imagine. Um, clearly, as you can see, it opens is easy for me. So let's see. Yeah, th that's basically it. Now, another thing that I usually do is, let's say I'm currently actually um, here, uh, Firefox, and I download a fly file. Now, when I download this file, I sometimes have to go to where it's downloaded, maybe in my downloads folder, and then click on it, right? So for me, um, yeah. So which basically means, let's say I go to this, I have to come here, for example, go to my downloads, and then look for the file, that I have gotten and then blah, blah, blah. As you can imagine, it takes a little bit of time, you know, to come here and then start looking for the tabs or whatever. So what I do is, let's say I close everything down, right? I'm back here. Let's say I just downloaded the file and the file that I downloaded is currently in downloads. I have to find it. So uh, first of all, I have a key binding. Remember like, uh, just like uh, I just described for, let's say I want to open uh, translate. I have Windows T. Now to open my, my uh, how do you call it? Um, Dolphin. I say Windows EE, so it has opened for me um, Dolphin, very nice, right? But that's not all. Now, one of the nice things I like about i3 is that it has something called mode, which means that you can cord keys together. Like when I press Windows E, it tells me to type a letter to open a directory. I want to go to downloads directory, so I just press D, it takes me to downloads directory. Let me come here again. I want to open my config my you know like because sometimes you have to check your config if i have a file maybe do whatever so you can do windows e config you give it a c c as you can imagine let's say i'm here i want to open uh, downloads again windows e d so it goes to the it doesn't create a new tab this actually prevents me from having to come here and then uh, you know uh, start looking okay do i have uh, this tab open yes maybe because one of the things uh, dolphin has which i probably don't like a lot is uh, that you see it doesn't have the ability to toggle between two tabs. So I don't really like that. Anyway, I don't want to do this. So this is how it's done. Super easy and I like it a lot. Now, one thing that probably I should talk about, okay, maybe I should show you how it's done with this first before I go. So again, it comes here. Remember the, the function here, where, where, where was I? Okay, again, if it's, uh, if it's uh, you can see here, if it's, if it's for Dolphin mode, then I should launch Dolphin. And where the hell is Dolphin? Let's go to this search, Dolphin, boom. Launch Dolphin. So this is the part for Dolphin, as you can see here. So if it's Creepers and Dolphin, and then launch application. So this is how I'm using, I'm calling, I'm opening a specific uh, workspace inside Dolphin. 
So let me show you probably what these functions look like. Uh, I don't know, should I, should, maybe I should do, what's it called? Let's come here, the name of the file. Hmm. It's called i3config, i3config, boom. So this is basically the file that I use. So this is, this is the dictionary key, super simple. I have the letters that I want to go. And these are the uh, places that I, uh, this is the, uh, the, the, the places that I should go. Super easy and, and to do that. Now, um, probably you, would, you, are, you are thinking of what the hell is this like to find files, right? So, um, yeah, I have lots of files on my computer, lots of books, lots of PDFs and stuff like that. Yeah, I can't really remember sometimes where they are located. Actually, it's, it doesn't mean that uh, I have uh, books all over the place. Actually, I do organize, uh, I have uh, some system of, um, of, 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 of an organization actually going on. But, yeah, but it takes a lot of time, man, to just go into these folders. Let's say, for example, let's say, let's say I have, let's say, e home Zotero, for example, as you can see. You can come here, you can come, where, where the name of the, the books? I don't know, man, you can come here. Yeah, you can search for the books here if you want them. Or you can open, actually, I have Zotero. Let me show you why. I can open Zotero, let's say, go to books. Mm, yeah, I find this, these are some of the books that I have. I can come here, I click, but seriously, man, this takes a little bit of time. Let's say I'm actually looking for, just look for some random book here. Let's say, um, let's look for some random name. Whatever functional analysis, well, this this book right functional functional analysis whatever. So I I press I have a key binding like Windows dot like right. I would like to see functional. Let's say analysis PDF. Okay, that's not really good. But is it is this, is this the book? Okay, probably I don't know. But this is supposed to be a fuzzy finder. Functional analysis. It's a PDF. Wow, I'm surprised that it, it is not able to find this exact book. Really, really, I have to check, why not? Maybe this book is not in the path. Actually, there's a path which this guy search, searches for. Let's look for something else. Um, I have to check this one. I don't know, look for something else like deep learning, generative deep learning. Let's see. Actually, oh, probably the name of the book is not, let's see. Okay, generative, generative deep learning okay so it's found this book right now if i click on it as you can imagine it opens it for me here i can start viewing this one clearly easily so now um let's um one last thing probably let's see if, I, if there's anything okay you probably would like to see what this looks like right uh, to be honest i don't even remember the name how it's called this is the wrong place let's see uh, config this is the place let's look for scripts yeah, I forgot the name to be honest. What is it called? I have, I have lots and lots of scripts. I've forgotten the name. Just let me see. Fuzzy search or something like FZF search. Maybe this is the one. So this is basically how I have uh, this fuzzy search. That so yeah, I haven't written this because at the time uh, when I started using i3, I was using uh, writing everything in Bash because why not? So this is basically what happens. Um, I open. Um, to be honest, I can't really even, even remember anymore what the hell. Um, is this the place? Yeah, I think this is the place. So this is the code that I came up with at the time. It calls FZF, as you can see. FZF is the tool that allows you to do fuzzy search. It, which calls find in these folders. And then it opens Kitty, which I'm currently using like this. And then when I search for the thing, when I press enter, that uh, stuff, the selected guy, I call it with XGD open and then sends it for me to the output and then I'm done. So this is how it, um, this is how it, um, it looks like. Now let's see if there's anything le else left for me to talk about. Let's see, I've already covered all of this fancy stuff. Let's see, key bindings. Hmm. To be honest, I think I've already said everything that I needed to say. Yeah, I guess that is all. So yeah, so this is basically uh, my i3 workflow and uh, how I currently use it. And as you can imagine, it's really, really, really straightforward. I mean, uh, yes, it takes a little bit of time. I'm not going to lie <laughs> because lots of people ask me how, I mean, you took like a year. I know lots of people maybe are asking me, I'm sarcastically like, okay. You are... Because I try to be some sort of an evangelist for, um, 
Linux stuff, like tell people, oh man, this is so cool. But for some reason, not everyone seems to uh, share the same uh, enthusiasm for <laughs> for um, configuring their editors to look uh, quite uh, nice and fancy. To be honest, for me, I'm super happy with uh, how things have turned out and really, really nice. You know, it's so easy what I'm doing. You know, I, I, it's um, yeah. There's nothing else to do. I mean, I've had, it's it's just basically now nothing like my computer is no longer standing in my way it's, it's now completely invisible it's uh, you already know, you don't need to remember you don't need to have struggle with 100 windows opening on top of each other and stuff like that no no everything is super so easy to uh, to find and yeah if i have an idea for example of let's say um actually there's one application that i use which bombards me with lots of floating like i have one window and then it starts popping up so many floating uh, floating uh, floating windows then it takes probably you have to okay can i just see the main application not all of these floating windows that are covering my view so i'm currently thinking of uh, writing a function which uh, goes to a workspace if the workspace has any floating stuff all floating uh, windows should be hidden in the scratch uh, in, in in the scratch part scratch workspace or whatever it's called then uh, when i uh, decide okay i want to see them now maybe i can unhide them very easy function probably wouldn't take a couple of lines but yeah, probably anytime I have a new idea, then I'll be um, implementing them, to be honest. I mean, it's quite simple. Let's see how much, how many lines of code this entire thing is. Okay, 306 lines. Okay, if you remove the, um, how do you say, the comments and all these things, it's not too complicated, to be honest. So I guess um, if you have any questions, I mean, if somebody watches this video, in fact, which I don't really think somebody would be searching for this video but if you end up searching for this video and then you have any questions maybe you can ask and i'll be happy to respond